everybody, welcome to the Impressive channel. I wanted to do a behind the music documentary on Destiny's Child. Now this story has been told quite often, however this is the 20th anniversary since Destiny's Child has been in the music industry and I wanted to do a video on them. Destiny's Child is a widely known girl group that has achieved groundbreaking success. Destiny's Child had numerous hits on the Billboard charts and they achieved a plethora of awards including several Grammys. They sold out arenas all over the world and sold over 60 million records worldwide. The success of Destiny's Child was astounding considering it was an R&B group that thrived in a pop dominated music era. Despite the glitz and glam of it all, the members of the group had to endure a grueling work schedule and they were shielded from experiencing normal things that other teenage girls experienced. Also, the group had internal struggles that eventually became public when two of the members were suddenly ejected from the group. The original members of Destiny's Child included Latavia Robertson, Latoya Luckett, Kelly Rowland, and the lead singer Beyonce Knowles. The quartet started singing together at an early age and they were first managed by Andretta Tillman. Then they were managed by Beyonce's domineering father, Matthew Knowles. Before the group became a success, they faced several setbacks, including being dropped from their first record label. Despite the setbacks, Destiny's Child signed with Columbia Records and from there their career skyrocketed. Every album they released went multi-platinum. However, in the height of their fame, drama ensued. There was a clear separation in the group. Latoya and Latavia began to grow increasingly frustrated with the group's management, which was led by Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles. From the beginning, Latoya's mother, Pamela, did not fully trust Matthew. Before the group signed their record deal contract, Matthew said it was mandatory for them to sign his management contract. Latoya's mother found that odd and she wanted to know the stipulations of Matthew's contract before allowing her daughter to sign it. However, Matthew put pressure on the group members to sign it and her mother eventually caved in. More problems began to surface in the group. Matthew Knowles' presence and demands intimidated the girls. Beyonce was the only one who stood up to him, but the other group members were silenced. However, Latoya and Latavia were tired of not having a voice and they grew to resent the management team. Beyonce had no issues because her father and her cousins were a part of the management team. Kelly Rowland was more timid and she didn't dare complain. However, Latoya and Latavia became vocal about their issues. They felt like there was favoritism shown toward Beyonce and Kelly because they were the only ones allowed to sing lead. Also, they felt disposable, like they weren't really needed in the group. When Latavia had a 104 fever and was sent to the hospital, Matthew was completely apathetic and suggested that one of the background dancers temporarily take Latavia's place while she recovered. Matthew got the phone call that Latavia was very sick and the next day we were going on our European tour and he was like, well, Janella, the choreographer, can take her place. I was shocked. I have 104 fever. I can't leave. She's in the hospital. Lastly, there was a money problem. According to Columbia Records, Destiny's Child was supposed to get paid $475,000 to $950,000 after recording their two albums. But Matthew Knowles was getting a huge chunk of that money. Latoya and Latavia were confused because they weren't seeing the money they worked hard for. Plus, they had a poor communication with management and the label, so they couldn't get answers. Where was their money really going? You look up some days and you're like, okay, I can't pay my cell phone bill. <laughs> we had questions. Latoya was like, well, you know, I want to go get another manager. There's no reason that Beyonce driving a Jaguar right now and my mama still is driving this old Mazda. Beyonce and Kelly, on the other hand, fared well financially and they were completely in the dark about how Latavia and Latoya were being treated. But they sensed that their sacred friendship and sisterhood was becoming strained. For whatever reasons, we grew apart. It was two over here and two over here. A group can't work like that at all. 
Latavia and Latoya's gripe with management became more apparent and it bothered Beyonce because it was her father. When Destiny's Child went on tour with the singing group Jagged Edge, there was a big altercation on their tour bus. Latoya and Latavia were dating two of the members in Jagged Edge, which was a concern to their management team and Kelly and Beyonce. Beyonce and Kelly believed that the members from Jagged Edge, Brian and Brandon Casey, got into Latoya and Latavia's heads. Beyonce said they lost focus. They didn't want to do interviews, rehearse, or take voice lessons. Anybody that met us can see that me and Kelly were in one group and they were in another. It was obvious. Also, Matthew didn't get along with Latoya's mother, Pamela. Pamela was the group's chaperone on tour and she sort of played an advocate for both Latoya and Latavia. Matthew didn't like this because he felt like his authority was being threatened. When Latoya's mother tried to go on the tour bus with them, their management team threatened to kick her off the tour bus and banish Latoya and Latavia from the group. Our management was like, if Pam gets on that bus, then y'all are gonna lose your job. Jagged Edge confronted Matthew and told him that there was no way they were gonna allow him to kick Latoya's mother off of the bus. We were like, hell no, like you're not gonna kick somebody's mother off a bus, like, you know what I'm saying, like, no. Jagged Matthew was upset about this and he kicked Jagged Edge off the tour. That was the last straw for Latoya and Latavia. They wanted to disaffirm their agreement with Matthew as their manager and hire their own business manager who had their best interests at heart. However, this decision would cause even more chaos. Matthew was fed up with this and he kicked them both out. Matthew told Beyonce and Kelly that their former group members were getting replaced. Meanwhile, Latoya and Latavia were completely unaware of the fact that they were being disposed of. Latoya and Latavia were supposed to film a music video for Destiny's Child's next single, Say My Name, but they were never called back to work. By that time, they had the unfortunate experience of learning that two new girls replaced them. We're looking at each other like, oh my gosh, wow. The drastic change in the group's lineup caused an unbelievable amount of controversy. Fans were astounded and the media was going in a frenzy. Latoya and I, we never quit the group. Never quit. We never quit. Never left. Never even said anything about, about quitting. quitting the group. We simply wanted to disaffirm our personal management agreement with our manager. Columbia Records is not going to deal with two managers. But we have to disaffirm Matthew's contract to even be able to be heard. And all we wanted was to be able to bring another manager in. So we felt like someone had our best mm -hmm. interests as well. Latoya and Latavia were livid and they ended up filing a lawsuit against Matthew, Columbia Records, and Beyonce and Kelly, which was later settled out of court. Meanwhile, Beyonce and Kelly had to do some serious damage control and explain their side of the story. Their issue was with management and not with the two of you. Well, they slept a nice lawsuit on us. Yeah. So uh, that's a lot of love. That's a that's some <laughs> hard love, isn't it? Both Beyonce and Kelly wrote an open letter to Latavia and Latoya. Beyonce wrote, I have shared some of the best moments in my life with the two of you by my side. I have also shared some of the worst. She then went on to list several transgressions perpetrated against her by Latoya and Latavia. I never complained when you didn't sing one note on numerous songs on the album. I never complained that when I was working my butt off in the studio, as I did on the last album, that the two of you were both either sleeping or on your phones approximately 80% of the time. I never complained when the two of you were lip singing to my vocals on some of the videos and on stage. In fact, I only helped make our contributions appear to be equal to the public. By the end of the letter, Beyonce was clearly heated. Approximately every three weeks or less, there is drama caused by one or both of you. It has been this way for at least the past two years and I don't deserve this. Kelly wrote this. I think it's so funny how every time there is something good going on with Destiny's Child, one of you will spring something on us, Beyonce and me. 
and before I've tried to forgive and forget and move on, but I refuse to be run over and receive punches from y'all. Y'all have taught me not to take crap from anyone and to always watch your own back. Latoya and Latavia went on various radio stations, slamming the management team and criticizing Beyonce and Kelly for getting all of the attention. Beyonce's mother, Tina Knowles, was fed up that Beyonce was receiving so much backlash. Tina Knowles backed her daughter's claims. She said in a Vibe magazine article, from the time Latoya got in the group, there was always drama, always jealousy, always madness, she said. People don't know all the crap that we've been through with Latoya and Latavia. You give people an inch and they take a mile. And that's basically what happened. Beyonce and Kelly kissed their butts all the time, spoke to them first, and went into the studio and did all the work. Now Latoya painted a different picture and she said, we weren't lazy. When it was time to write, when it was time to sing, we were ready to go, she says. I want to put somebody on a stand with a Bible and have them say that we didn't work. She said that her problems with the group stemmed from her refusal to go with the flow. This was the fourth time I've been kicked out, she says. Anytime a contract came up, Matthew kicked me out of the group because I wouldn't sign just anything. It was like a bad relationship. He would kick me out, then call back a few days later talking about, I need you, I need you, I need you. He needs prayer. He needs a hug. Latavia did not open up in this Vibe magazine interview, but in the legal document, she did accuse Matthew Knowles of greed, insistence on control, self-dealing, and promotion of his daughter. She said he didn't want us to know the truth, and the truth was he wasn't right. He wasn't right in a lot of things he was doing. Latoya stood by what Latavia said. Latoya said everything was like, this is my group, my daughter's going to sing lead, deal with it. He would say things like, if you don't like it, then you need to get another career. This is my group. And if you don't know, Matthew acquired the trademark for Destiny's Child, even though the group was originally put together by Andretta Tillman. As you can see, this was a complete mess and there was constant back and forth in the media between Latoya and Latavia and Beyonce and Kelly. And they were only teenagers at the time, so they didn't really know how to silently deal with the drama. The media still continued to harass Beyonce and Kelly about the drama in Destiny's Child. Reporters bombarded them with questions and Beyonce was sick of it. I saw Latavia in a mall one day, but I Let's mean, cut that over. Don't say her name. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're right. Thanks. The last thing on my mind was former members. I didn't even think about it. I mean, that's so old and I'm so over it. I don't even think about it anymore. Beyonce, do you still drive the Jaguar? Yes, I do, and it's an older one. And just to clear everything up, every single one of us all made the exact same amount of money. Yeah. So we all had opportunities to go out and buy cars. And I've been having the car for about two years, the same car. It was my choice to spend my money on my car, and it was everybody else's choice to spend their money on whatever they wanted to, but we all made the same amount of money. No, my name is Kelly. That's Beyonce. Just as soon as you think you could never be happier, you run into that crazy journalist that just has to say something stupid. Michelle. Here comes the lady, calls Michelle and Kelly, Latoya and Latavia. Now she know, dog, well, she know their name. Um, Beyonce, you sound like, you sound really, like, kind of hostile about this. I mean, has this been, this, this whole, the rumors and stuff, has this really irritated Tired you? Yeah. yeah. So it seems like it's hostility between you and the two members that were thrown yeah, out of the group. how's that lawsuit going? We're still working on the settlement. Because I had heard at one point that you, that you all, you know, Destiny's, Beyonce and the girls, that you all weren't allowed to perform and do a lot I'm of stuff. I'm sorry, can you please not call us Beyonce and the girls? I have to. Because that is definitely an insult to Kelly and Michelle. No, I like them, but the attention stays on you. But it's yeah. clear that the group is Beyonce and the girls, so why don't you just go solo? No disrespect to the other girls, but you know, we see how things are shaping up. You guys are on TV, the camera stays on you, you get the hottest Dior, they get the leftovers. And I could have very well gone solo, right? but because of my loyalty to the fans and because of my love for Kelly, that's something that I don't want to do and I wasn't ready to do. And we still had a hit album to do and we still are in Destiny Child and there's still the Destiny Child. Despite the negative press, Destiny's Child's success continued to skyrocket. 
Say My Name became one of their biggest hits and their album Writings on the Wall sold over 8 billion records. Meanwhile, the new group members, Farrah Franklin and Tanitra Michelle Williams, were adjusting to the group's hectic schedule and demands. They had to quickly learn the group's routines and fit in with the image of the group. Michelle had to drop her first name, Tanitra, because it was considered to be too ethnic. Why, why did she never use Tanitra? I was told it was too Too ghetto? Ethnic. Farrah <laughs> admitted that she had to dye her hair red, lose weight, and tan often to look more like the former group member, Latavia. So let's talk about <laughs> Tina Knowles. Mm -hmm. Because I, I heard while you were in the group, did she have you dye your hair? Or she wanted you to dye it something other than the stunning black that it is? Yeah, my hair was red when I was in the group, actually. That's how they wanted me to look. What else group. would they do to ugly, ugly you up? <laughs> Well, um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, but I mean, I did have to tan a lot. When I tan a lot? Because they want Beyonce to be the lightest one? Uh, I mean, mm. Michelle, I, and Kelly tanned sometimes, <laughs> so. Wow. Mm. Wow. And Beyonce wouldn't tan? Wow. Not unless we were wow. at a beach. Wow. <laughs> and then that sunscreen would be 45. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Also, Michelle and Farrah had to adjust to performing live in front of large audiences. Michelle had prior singing experience, but Farrah did not. They were advised to lip sync to pre-recorded background vocals while Beyonce sang live. Michelle managed to fit in well with the group and she quickly became friends with Beyonce and Kelly. Farrah, on the other hand, did not. Farrah had a difficult time adjusting to the group's grueling schedule, and she had personal issues with management as well. She was very unhappy in the group because she felt like she wasn't being treated right, which was similar to how Latoya and Latavia felt. I felt like I was losing my identity and I was not being treated as you would personally want someone treating your daughter. It was management. But um, it's not a way you would want somebody treating your 18-year-old daughter. Farrah was criticized quite often for not measuring up to Destiny's Child's standards. Farrah had the look, but she did not have the vocal talent or the drive that the other girls had. And it was apparent. You don't know the pain that I feel. What song is this? You're taking my love for granted and you just want to see it your way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It's about that time. Houston. I'm going to tell you what's on my mind. I'm fed up with you not being Houston, we need the zhuzh up equipment. When you know love is all I need. Okay, but you want to know what? That's still workable. She sounded good to you? Yeah. Thank you. Tone deaf and blind. <laughs> I see what he is. It, it, listen, it's not the best voice. Kelly and Beyonce and I became friends. And when push came to shove, I was able to sing and dance. And uh, God just put me in the right place at the right time. That's right. <laughs> when Matthew and the group found out that Farrah posed on the cover of Tariq's book, The Art of Macking, they weren't too pleased. Destiny's Child was very particular about their image and they didn't want to draw any more criticism than they were already receiving. More drama began to unfold after this. When Farrah was sick and in the hospital, Matthew showed no concern and he told her to get up and make it to their show the next day. Went to the hospital yesterday of dehydration and a stomach flu. So I'm trying to get through this day, <laughs> but still can't wait to perform. What Farrah didn't know is Destiny's Child had no days off. Beyonce, Michelle, and Kelly were forced to work while they were sick or injured. So in Matthew's mind, there was no reason why Farrah shouldn't show up to work. The ladies had press tours, TV specials, and performances to do. No one could afford to miss a day off. Farrah, however, grew tired of the demands and she was absent during some of Destiny's Child's important MTV specials. Farrah, you know earlier she was telling y'all how she wasn't feeling well, her stomach virus is kicking in right now. The gorgeous. We're yes. stomach down 2000. Farrah is not feeling well and unfortunately she won't be, be able, able to perform. perform. Matthew and his management team were very upset with Farrah and they felt like she was spoiled and ungrateful. 
They allegedly berated and yelled at her behind the scenes, which caused Farrah to abruptly quit the group. After only five months of being a part of Destiny's Child, Farrah Franklin was gone. I just couldn't, you know, handle the situation anymore. I had to leave. And it was like everybody just started ganging up on me. Everybody has something to say. And then so I walked out of the room. I'm like, I'm not about to let all you guys just jump on me and gang up on me. This is ridiculous. What, was Beyonce one of the people? And Kelly, for that matter? Was... No, no, they weren't um, in the room during that conversation. But, I mean, I didn't leave the group not to do anything. I could have stayed in the group. It was about money or fame. Obviously, I would have stayed in the group. I was not kicked out. I mean, I've just always been a leader and an individual. I've never been a follower. I've never been a happy to be here type of person because I work so hard to, for where I am. I was, I wanted to be happy and this is like everything I've ever dreamed for and yes. I wasn't happy. Yes. The news of Farrah quitting the group didn't sink in at first. According to Farrah, the management team didn't care to reach out and convince her to stay. However, Michelle and Beyonce called and asked her to come to their Australian show. Farrah refused. They didn't want to believe that Farrah actually quit the group, but she did, and Matthew warned them to cut ties with Farrah. That's the last fight out of here? Yes, ma'am. You might have to go straight to the airport. Okay. I don't have no luggage. I'm, I'm rolling. Well, it's better for you to go home than not have luggage. No, it's not. It's not? Because where y'all coming out there? Well, somebody can send your luggage. But then I'm going to have to wait for four days before I get all my stuff. Well, it's either that or you're going to probably miss your flight. Nobody was allowed to speak to me. Matthew told all the girls not to talk to me. I already knew how Matthew worked, and that was all his doing. Destiny's Child lost another member yet again. The headlines were embarrassing, and it forced the group to address Ferris' departure. She was distant. She wasn't really vocal. She wasn't really talking. She said she couldn't take it anymore, and she said she was gonna go home, so she left. Three of us continued and did it, hoping that maybe she didn't leave and go home, maybe she just stayed at the hotel or whatever. We came back, she did leave. Once again, the group was hounded by the media for the latest changes in their lineup. Radio station hosts joke that no one can survive in Destiny's Child. Beyonce, being the spokesperson of the group, was grilled about the drama within the group. Both Beyonce and Kelly opened up about LaToya and Latavia's departure in an exclusive Vibe magazine article. They were still very sore at the fact that their ex-group members sued them and badmouthed them on different radio stations. LaToya was like tone deaf, Beyonce says. She wasn't even originally a singer. She was a rapper, Kelly adds. Beyonce agrees, and they continue. Latavia was originally brought in the group as a dancer, but she was my friend and I wanted her to be in the group. When we first came out, we really were like sisters, Beyonce says. We were all very, very close, but we stopped getting along almost two years before the breakup. And in interviews, we couldn't say we were unhappy because we didn't want to let our fans down because they're our number one priority. So we agreed to act like everything was okay, even though it wasn't. Grimacing at the bitter memory, Kelly adds, it felt like one big lie. There was a point where we did not eat, Kelly says. We went into a huge depression. Beyonce says she was incapacitated both emotionally and physically. For two weeks, I literally stayed in my room and did not move. I felt like I could not breathe. I had a nervous breakdown because I couldn't believe it and it hurt so bad. Beyonce and Kelly lost more than their group members. They lost their best friends and their sisters. And it did hurt them. They were brought up as sisters. That's years and years of friendship and loving somebody. She was very sad. I would speak to Tina and Tina's like she wouldn't get out of bed today, Janella. It was like the world was caving in on her. I don't think I've ever seen her that depressed. Mine and Latoya's issues was with management. It had yeah. nothing to do with us as a girl. So you liked know. each other. Yeah. Yes, we, we, we loved each other. We were sisters. I called Beyonce. You could tell that things had been miscommunicated to her. Our issue was strictly with management, and it had nothing to do with Beyonce and Kelly. Next time on Destiny's Child Secrets Exposed. Internet. Someone can dislike me for whatever reason, just make up things, and, and there's no way of controlling that. So 
until it got really, really bad, I've never, I've, I've disclosed my depression to the point of I was suicidal. I knew it. I was just trying to numb so much stuff, drinking all day, every day. You reveal in the song Dirty Laundry that you had an ex-boyfriend who was physically abusive. It was an emotional roller coaster.